Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode, this month's episode, this year's episode, this quarter's episode, <laughs> quarterly episode of the Board and Scale podcast. Me, 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 me. I'm your host, Sebastian, and these, wait, we're co-hosts? Is there a host and co-host, or is everyone co-host? I don't know. We are the co-hosts. <laughs> Because, I mean, everyone's a co-worker. There's not just worker, right? That's true. Unless you're just the only worker. We are the hive mind known as Sebastian. <laughs> they don't call them co-worker placement and games. That's true. They're just worker placement games. Mm. But they're all the same. The workers? Yeah. Unless it's your It's playing. one person. Unless it's one person throughout the day. And doing no, unless it's Tuscany. Mm. You got the special workers. The grande workers? And the grande worker. And the special ones, yeah. Hmm. He just ate. What? <laughs> it's uh, Gen Z speak. I ate. Oh, and you left no crumbs? Yeah. Is he being, <laughs> is he being demure? <laughs> <laughs> so mindful. And that's a bleep. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast, Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. And the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right. right, 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 right. All right, let's Can't get into let's get into our highlights for the last m- amount of time since we've gotten together. Seventeen years. I'm gonna go first. All right. Uh, my highlight. You, I'm stealing it. It's. I think I'm seeing. I don't know. You guys, you play a lot more than we me. Play, we played a lot of games. You guys have played a lot. We've played a lot of games since the last ride. But my my highlight from two weeks ago <laughs> is River of Gold. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Gold. River of Gold. First of all, the box is gorgeous. It's got gold foiling on it, embossing, however you say it. Very cool. Aesthetically, very like attractive box. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the game on the inside, also very pretty. The board has the gold foiling as well on it. And is that it actually? Game's got a great personality. The game has a great personality. You know, it's not, she's not all just looks. Um, and I was excited to play the game because it looks so good. And while, when we started playing after a few turns, (gasps) I knew, I was like, I like this game on your turn. You use the dot your die to do one of three things depending on what that value is. Which is nice. Everybody has their own die. At the end of your turn is when you roll that die to prepare for your next turn. And turns in this game can be so quick and snappy. And you're just like, cool, I'm doing this, this, boom, that's my turn. Next person turn. Also nice. Which random you should they should fucking <laughs> They should do in Carcassonne too. It's the only game that I can think of. This is the same kind of thing. You roll at the end of your turn, so you've got everybody else's turn to think about what you're going to do. What do you mean, like pull a tile? Yeah. I mean, you, I guess you could just do that. Yeah. I've never, like, played, I've never played the game. Does I mean, would that change the decision space for the players that are that are going after? Like, they see something that you have, and they're like, oh, okay, well, I gotta, do I got to change what I'm going to do now because I see they have a blank? Is that knowledge open? I don't think so. Oh, so well, you could have no, it. No, 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 no. It's, I mean, it is open because you draw at the beginning of your turn, so you just flip it. But sure. But if it was, I guess, I you, would so you could make secret. it private. So yeah. you could just like, you draw it. You have, yeah, I suppose you could do that. I don't know why you couldn't house rule that. Yeah. It wouldn't I don't change know the game at all. Why you would play that game instead, it's of, fine. instead of something? It's a good else. game. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's an OG. It's, it's gone. Okay. Yeah. It's time but, has passed. It can anyway. sit quietly in the Hall of Fame. River of Gold. River of Gold is really good. <laughs> I'm being a hater. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, River, River of Gold is really good. That's my highlight. And I won. <laughs> helps. Always helps. Yeah. But I do want to play it again. Anyways, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Ah, man. I played a lot of stuff. That's enough mm-hmm. from you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, but I think the one thing that I am going to pick is going to be... Root. Okay, I just took mine. 
to be yeah, I got backups. It's okay. <laughs> it's been so long since I've played it last, and I really, I really like it. It's still, it's still held up since the last time I played it. I still really liked it. Who'd you the, play? I was the Marquis. Oh, you were the Marquis the, the Cat. Marquis the Cat. Um, yeah. the only, the only thing that I can gripe on Root is it kind of it just kind of ends mm. anticlimactic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know you. It was your first time playing, but I mean, like that's just kind of how it feels. Yeah. It's just like. No, I got it. I mean, I win. Well, especially because you don't, you don't complete the round. Yeah. Even it's just you got to the points. End of end of end of story. So, like, I don't remember. There wasn't a turn. Was there a player order balance at all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's just yeah. Because is player order determined by like the faction? Faction. I, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be the only. I actually thing. don't know. I couldn't find it. Yeah, I, I that would be the only thing where like because like in Rising Sun. The, the different factions have starting honor, so they have like, a different initiative, like, like basically. A, yeah, exactly. There's like a slight, like, okay, well, like, we know you're you might be a little bit more powerful because of your abilities, so we're gonna nerf you with a lower honor or something like that. So, and you know me, I like, I, I, <laughs> I like, I like asymmetry, and I mean, that's all root is <laughs> it's symmetry in my laugh. Um, <laughs> all of the factions, in my opinion, are fun to play. You played all of them, all They've, ten. Yeah. Wow. No, 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 no. The base ones. I've only oh. ever played with the base ones. I've never played with the expansions. Um, they're all they're all fun and like they feel different enough. Uh, and I, I I don't know why I thought it was a much more complicated game than it was. Like, I think just because teaching it is hard. I guess it's the teach. Yeah, the base mm-hmm. game is the base game is simple as all get out. The factions are fairly simple. Simple. Had how I simple? How before? simple is all of Get Out? <laughs> <laughs> had, had Isaiah played before? Yes. So I was the only player who hadn't played before. So you'd had three experienced players. That probably doesn't hurt. Like when yeah. you sat down, you're like, okay, we've done this before. I also had one that I was strategy may have been more complicated because like having to, I was the eerie, so having to figure out how to do my um, decree. And like how to make sure I wasn't gonna totally screw myself over every turn with the decree cards. Yeah. Um, but all, all things considered, though, relatively straightforward. I think the 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 woodland creatures or the vagabond probably would have been more complicated for the first time. Um, vagabond seems so. really fun though. <laughs> vagabond also has like six times the rules that are the, only yeah. the others do. Um, but yeah. No one else, no one fought him either though. No one no one got on his bad side. The rest of us fought. Everyone basically the rest most of the game was us trying to suppress the woodland creatures <laughs> played by Enrique. And uh we were successful. Yeah, kept him down. Kept kept the revolt down. Who won? I did. That pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, root and it's cute too. Little woodland creatures. Root and cute. All right. Cute root. Also a leader. I like I like them. Leader games. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, all. Okay. Um, it's a toss up. Um obviously River of Gold was great, so was Root. Um I'm gonna go with a new an a first play, first time play, and we'll go with Wondrous Creatures. That mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Uh, very very entertaining game. Very, so a lot of like it's really cute. Um, all the different like creatures feel very kind of, you know, almost Pokemon esque. Um, the way that the you interact with like the board to like place your um your creatures on it to activate, collect resources and do stuff around the board, I thought was neat and interesting. Um, a little enough asymmetry with the the different uh. Powers, powers. And the one-time use cards. Yep, and then like if you got the beasts and stuff, um, there are some different ways to make it more more interesting. So, yeah, uh, the, the beasts are an add-on. Yeah, I think they are right. They're 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 optional. Mm-hmm. I know they're at least optional play. I think. Oh yeah, they were because they're called they're, gargantuan. Yeah, whatever gar- gargantuan beasts or something like that. 
it is a it is an expansion pack. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I really enjoyed that one. That was fun. Nice. That is a it was a very pretty game. Yeah. I do remember that. A little more frustrating for me, but yeah, it's fun. Well. Can't wait to play it again. <laughs> I'll play it again. Got to know the rules, man. It's fine. I just missed time my own stuff there. Yeah, that's well, all right. All right. And speaking of, of all these new games that we're talking about, uh, we should talk. About, I guess we want to talk about uh, some of the easy one first. Yeah. When you talk about, you already brought it up. Gold foiling. Gold foiling. Embossing, whatever you want to talk about. Feels like it seems like it's the maybe the the next Yeah. Big like the next push for a new a new standard. Yeah. Courtesans yeah. did it really, really well. Small box game. Yep. Cards had, are foiled. God. Had no business being as pretty as it is. Such a oh the art in that game. Yeah. I can't think of any any other examples. That's not like trading cards. Sure. That has like an upgrade, like a foil board or card. I mean, holographic foiling and stuff. I think is Wonders has it on the I box, j- right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just backed a uh, Trust Me, which is in the hat line. The hats. Okay. Same. It's in that same line of games, and one of the. Um, Stretch goals is foiled cards. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that's not like... And it's the last one. It's, I mean, there's a difference, too. So, like, holographic cards and stuff have obviously been around for a while. Um, Magic does them. Pokemon it did them. A lot of trading card games. Um, heck, um, uh, Star Realms has foil cards. And then they actually went in one of their campaigns. You could basically get everything... That they had done for Star Realms, foil. Damn, and it'd just be a giant foil game. Um, so you for just any go blind, <laughs> for anybody who had already owned the game, it was a completely insane. Like, that would why would you ever do this? And if you didn't, have you never played the game or whatever? You had didn't have everything already. Like, I don't know why that would be your entry point. Um, Kavanko, imagine <laughs> the absolute flashbang if you dropped like that box of cards outside. <laughs> On a sunny, just yeah, like on a sunny day, <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, there's. I think it's different though, because yeah. So that's definitely been around for a minute, but like kind of like that slight. <laughs> it's because it's not you know the game the in courtesans. It's not the entire card isn't glossed, right? Isn't embossed or, or or foiled or however you want to say it. It's just like key pieces, key elements of it, and the same like decorative pieces. Yeah. And same with River of Gold, right? It's also very thematic. It works really well um, with. You know the name of the game and kind of what it's doing, uh, but it's only parts of the board and parts of the things here and there that have the the foiling and whatnot. Yeah. So it really makes it pop and just yeah, just looks. Yeah. It's an extra premium feel, like pinstripe pieces, like yeah. trim trim and stuff. Yeah, it has a gold little, foil, really cool. A little bit of extra chrome. Is that the easiest Co- game that you've taught? River of Gold. Mm-hmm. No, easiest. Yeah, easiest. No. Yeah. Not at all. For it just him? felt that game felt so simple. You could teach I, fucking Uno. <laughs> I, uh, you know, what I'm, I'm not talking about like, you know. Oh man, how, how do you play 52 pickup? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you have to put a weight rating on it first, and then say like, what's the easiest? Like, what was the the easiest feeling teach for a game that was X weight or something like that? You'd have to qualify it. So I'm stealing a little bit um, from Carly. She said that it felt like, you know, it gave her the feeling of a of a medium weight euro with mm-hmm. the time of a more lighter side euro. Sure. In which I honestly, I feel like the game went pretty fast. It, it did. did. Very fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's very fast, but it also is not too fast. Yeah, it felt. I com- felt it like felt I complete. did. It felt complete. Like what a I complete could. experience. The board was pretty well filled up. There wasn't much left to do. Uh, I think you're able to hit most of like some some of the bigger things that you may you may have been trying to. I mean, it felt a little bit fast for me, probably also because I was like farther behind in in picking up and understanding how to maximize my my turns and my points and whatnot. So and I was like, oh okay, I need to do this this and this, and it's like oh. 
we're out of tiles. <laughs> okay. Well, the only we're, thing we're that I would say that I could gripe, there's that word again. Um, and we talked about it was the the patrons, the the clan abilities, how each clan has their own two characters that oh. would give you the special abilities. Or probably should have just been Oh, not color coded. They're all just random. Yeah. Because I mean, also from what it seemed like each clan their ability is like in a specific mechanic of the game. Are you talking about like the little tokens that you could place to be like double your score in this? No, the 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 characters. He's talking about your your character that give you a unique. Ability. Oh, that's right. Cuz like we Red talk- dealt with the influence track, I think. Yeah. The crab dealt with building stuff like mm-hmm. that. The two I- characters, Red and the crab. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we talked about that now that I remember. Yeah, we said it would be a lot cooler if they just I think just took all the the asymmetric player power cards and just made them color agnostic. <laughs> yeah. And cards. then cards and made them agnostic so that way you could just draft them however, draw it random, however you wanted to do it, and it wouldn't matter with the color that you picked for your for your And you again, know, piece. expansion content. Also, I do think in the rule book it says you can just like... You can, but, just fucking but thematically like you want... I mean, because the cards... Because they're have, colored. Yeah, they're colored, yeah. right? So I understand why you would want... I'd, I'd you know... I'd like them to be colorless, so that way you can mix and match without that kind of. Because yep. the same too thing random. In, in wondrous creatures, right? Mm-hmm. Weren't you saying that? Yeah, because we had the when you when you play, you get your was it your special? It explicitly says in wondrous creatures. Yeah, like you can just also divvy them up however you want. Yeah, and and again, got it. It's fine, but like in that one, it's a little different though because like those creatures. Rep- are actually represented by the by the animeeples or you know creature eeples or whatever, <laughs> whatever, the, whatever they're creeple. creeples, whatever they're called. So like you know, and again because those are a specific color because those are your player pieces, right? That, that you kind of for- it kind of forces you into that. So you can of course change that up and do whatever you want. It's just a little bit jarring. What? Don't look at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't don't look at me. Stop looking at me. Stop. I'm just busting up. <laughs> okay. Don't oh look my god. Can't take you anywhere. No, just because you because I was just thinking of you saying animeeples. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and then I said animeeples, aeeples in my head. <laughs> I, just, I think um, what was I just? I was reading a rule book. Oh, it's the Kavango rule book. They talk about because you have the you have the little animals for your colors and whatnot, and they call them animeeples. And I was like, no, nah, fucking. Do they have Heinz, the trademark sign on it? Heinz, Heinz, um, douche. Yeah. Fucking assholes. <laughs> what? I'm still mad about it. Um. What? Were you gonna say another another cool upgrade? The Kavango stuff? Like, is that what you're about to say? Oh no! Just Kavango give you a foil card. Yeah. Oh, they did give you a foil card. Yeah, a foil card. Yeah, and it's in of great. Random, it's in great condition. Of random yeah. eleven. At no no fault of their own. I mean, it was a packaging problem. The the card got smashed in the bottom. But they're gonna send the new one. Smash. I don't, actually, I, I I really probably should have told them. Like, man, I don't need you to send me another foil card. I'm. It's not. I'm not gonna put it in the. I deck. I was gonna say, is it supposed to be in the deck? No, I don't think so. I think it's just to be like, oh, I got a card. And like people are it collector like, little thing. Yeah, because there's eleven different ones. Um and like if you go on the the it was, it was Kickstarter. Yeah, I think it was Kickstarter or whatever. Like you go on the comment section, people are like, I got a pangolin. Yeah. I got a giraffe. Yeah. And everyone's like, Oh, I'm really excited. I got my favorite animal. It's like oh, it's cool. That's cool. So I just, mean. Yeah. <laughs> Grumpy old man yelling at clouds. <laughs> How dare everyone be having fun? Stop looking like things. Yeah, no, that was uh, yeah. I just mm. foil. Yeah. I do think secondary thing to upgrades, right? 
on the back of Kavango, they have uh, it's like a slotted board, so mm-hmm. you can put your cards in there, slide them in. The slots look like they need to be broken in. They all have like little folds on them, so we didn't do that one for this play. Yeah, they they uh, in one of the um, updates on the Kickstarter, they were like, "Hey, yep, you know, here's a tutorial on how to do it." And of course, the recommendation is like something like a like a guitar pick, something you can get in there and like all you got to do is pry it up like without once. like peeling. Yeah. yeah, and you just need to do it once. But I mean, because it's a, I mean, it's tight little slot, so like you can't use a. <laughs> can't use a card even the card is not strong enough to like get in there without damaging the card so you have to use something thin and hard uh-huh mm-hmm. yeah. yeah uh but yeah so we didn't play with that but it's also not really necessary i mean i think the other side of the board is perfectly fine like having to tuck them but i like, guess as long as you're not like you know it's just a cool little yeah, little thing, and it's great because it's not required, right? Because the other side of the board is just gives you the option to not play with it, so it's perfectly fine. So, like, hey, cool, it's there, it's there to use it, awesome. Also liked, also liked Kabongo too. Just, just in general. I know I didn't say it, but I did like Kabongo. Yeah, I might be a little biased. Well, because it's got animal owners. Because it's the, it's like the the. Uh, I feel like I haven't played an animal game in so long, or like a new animal game in so long. Did How you not count wondrous? Possible? No, because no. they're not real animals. I got, I got like an animal I, nature. I, yeah, like I kind a nature of agree. animal game. I kind of agree. That's fair. I'm trying to think of the last besides Kabongo. I'm trying to think of the last time. You haven't played. We haven't played Arnold in freaking years. I love cats. I mean, they're no. That's fair. It's not, they're, they're not like wouldn't. monsters. No, so. no. But like in like a game, like a where you're just the cats from all of cats are of mythical animals. Yeah, they are technically you're right. Probably habitats it was probably like the last time habitats. Yeah, I don't even remember the last time we played habitats together. Was I played it in when I was on vacation with my family? Yeah, um, it was making me think that when I was playing it, I was like, dude. I haven't played a animal game, a new one. I keep yeah. saying that. Like a, like back a in new August. animal game in so long. I mean, there's only so many, you know. And I do feel like, I feel like animal game theme Burn Watcher. was big for a minute, and it's cooling down now. I think you're underestimating the delivery times on Kickstarters and crowdfunding stuff. Because I think it's still there. I think it's still very popular. I think we're all just waiting but, for. Because also, right. usually yeah, animal like, stuff, nature stuff is like I mostly mean, small box slash like it, simple games. There's nothing. I mean, Ark Nova might take the cake for the heaviest. It is animal game. It has to be like but, strict, like not strictly, but like focused on animal yeah. stuff game. Yeah, I like, want another heavy animal game. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. But there's also no animal pictures in that fucking game. <laughs> yeah, your little token that has your species on it. Yeah, and the cards. Dumb. Everything else is. Black. Cuban cone. Black. <laughs> Cuban um, cone. Man, yeah, because I'm trying to think. So like. I guess that's really yeah, that's true. Because there's still. There's still games that are being launched on Kickstarter that are just like, oh, it's cute animals and stuff. Oh, like that Insectarium do. game? I haven't seen that one. Is that crowdfunding right now? I think so. Yeah. I have. I'm just kind of, I'm just over Kickstarter in general. So I've been for a while. I'm glad it's slowing down. Like, I'm really, really glad that I'm, you know, I uh, follow um, Board Game Co. and do like do his weekly board game. Roundup, roundup. Uh, crowdfunding roundup, and uh, it's there's been several weeks. Where he's like, I'm, he didn't do one because there just weren't enough new campaigns. Yeah. Like, why do um, why do an episode for two things? Exactly. So there are a couple out there right now. Of course, Puerto Rico is out. Um, but it's also like it's just not a new game though. No, so it's but like people who <laughs> neither like, was Castle of Burgundy. No, I just think that's like fans of the game. Yeah, that's kind of it. You know, Cyberpunk is doing really well. But I don't know anything about the cyberpunk IP, so it has zero appeal to me whatsoever, which is nice. I actually really wanted to play the game, but I didn't. The computer game? Yeah, but I didn't. I stopped. Pre- I've stopped pre-ordering stuff. Yeah. And so far, it's worked because <laughs> that one, Starfield, um, I forgot 
at least one more where the game came out and people were like, No Man's Sky. This sucks. No Man's Sky was a big one, yeah. Uh, this is the one I was thinking of. Emberleaf by Frank West, the guy who did... Owl uh, Cats. Owl Cats, yeah. It's only got 140,000. It'll probably, it'll probably get to 300,000 one last by its time. It's all said and done. Quick Ooh, another tree out, quick, game. Quick shout out to Emberleaf. Yeah. If you guys uh, like Isle of Cats, it was designed by the same designer. So go check that out. It's um, it's an interesting. So like he he calls it a card dancing game. Ooh, new is, mechanic. Yeah. So like you play you play your animals down on a board, and then like you can activate them additionally by like shifting them, and then like when they fall off the board, other things happen. Hmm. Like it's like a weird. It makes me think of Wingspan for some reason, you know. But it's like a timing thing. I don't yeah, know. there's other stuff going on. I don't remember it very well. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to back it or not, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of new games, I think we've talked about stuff in this genre, like this topic, like around it. But we're going to hit it if again. So, when do you want to? Ask the question. Teaching board games. Don't we all love to do it? If you do, you're a psychopath. <laughs> Unless your name's Rodney Smith. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. The thought just came to me. Would you rather be taught a board game or would you rather teach the board game? And or... How do you go about learning to teach and teach? How do you go about the teach itself? I know we've definitely talked about that part before, but yeah. What do you think? What do you prefer? You prefer learning or being taught? I think... I just said the same thing twice. (laughs) I said you prefer learning or being taught. (laughs) You prefer being taught or teaching? Do you like down or the opposite of up? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think, I think I prefer the teach because I feel like when I'm being taught, I'm listening, like I'm actively listening, but like halfway through, it's like the stuff in that previous half is already gone. Yeah. So it's like by the end of the teach, I know how the turn ends and how the game ends and everything before that, I vaguely remember. So those first, like, two rounds is me like, ah, yes, okay, he said that. Yeah, 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 um, Whereas if you're teaching, you know the game already. And it's just a matter of getting everybody on the same page. Hmm. I think if, I, if, I'm, if I'm perfectly motivated to, like, learn a game... I would rather teach it because I I do not listen. <laughs> I have a hard time listening <laughs> when people teach games, which is funny because wait, wait, I'm I have to the eggs have to not be hatched. Yeah, exactly. I'm in a, I'm in a mood lately where like I don't want to learn games myself, so yeah. I'm hundred percent fine halfway listening to someone teach a game and just muddling my way through it. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Um. Unless it's one of those bad boys, unless uh, it's unless it's a, a Lakerta. I just had to teach Con or not. Yeah, I just had to teach Kanban again, and it's just like fuck. It doesn't get any easier. Yeah, it's been mm-hmm. a minute. If it, if you if you haven't played it, it in like I mean, it's three just days, just Lakerta in general. Yeah, like I'm easy, I'm going through it. One I'm hitting the points. I feel like inventions is pretty easy. Inve- mm. I feel inventions is a pretty easy teach. I will no. say of the of the ones that I've taught. I think Kanban, Kanban's easier. You know, it's hard. Weather Machine. Yeah. I don't have it, but that game. Weather is Machine. Hard. Well, it's partly too because of the. We timed that one, and it was an hour and some some teach. For Kanban or for Weather, weather machine. machine? Weather Machine. Yeah, that one was ridiculous. I remember that. It was also in part because. I think, if you're teaching a group of gamers who who play a lot, when you're teaching the game, they're also trying to figure out how to win the game. A lot of times. So like Weather Machine is a very convoluted 
like point scoring system. You are not like, joking, dude. <laughs> like you have to do this and this, and then this thing has to pass at this time in order to get this. It is very challenging to understand like how to succeed in the game. Um, it's very deep, um, and I think the challenge is uh, is you're trying to listen to the rules and just get a basic understanding. Like, okay, I understand that these are the actions I can take, but why the hell am I taking these actions, and why am I taking them in this order in this sequence? And if you're trying to chew on that as a learner at the same time, which again I think most of us are kind of in that space, it makes it harder. I feel like Weather Machine is also one of those games where you can't, like, you can't you can't take like stall turns or like nothing turns. No, like it's a tight economy. You have to make your turn matter, and if if you can't do the thing that's like beneficial for you. You just you can't do the other thing that you can just do because it's like then it ruins your, the rest of your your resources, mm-hmm. your placement, you know, where your worker is for something else you want to do that's actually important. So then you're just like, I guess, bass. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. They also yeah. just man, they won't they want to make me take a nap afterwards. <laughs> yeah, lot. if you if you have trouble sleeping. Learn and play a Lacerda in the same day. It's yeah. just like you like you will sleep. It's it's after like twenty minutes and you're just in your head. You're like fuck. I am I, I'm still talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still talking, and we are on half the board. You know what's funny? My bigger worry is people listening to me talk. Uh-huh. I'm fine yapping for a long time, but then it, when I see if I look over and someone's just like. <laughs> like eyeballs glazed over you know i'm like i'm so sorry like we could put this away i know no. if i've been talking for 40 minutes non-stop we can put it away it's fine you gotta know who you're sitting down for stuff like that though like if i've never played a game with you before i'm not gonna start with something like that or even half like that because even if you sign up for it if you go to a con or something like that and you're like oh hey you know we're playing kanban and i need two other players or whatever and if you get two strangers you sign up like that's a tall order because if they, again if they are not they're not prepared for it and like I don't yeah like, I will do that so bear with me if you sit down with me to learn a game well I mean again if you if you know right I don't know I just think it's about knowing your audience right like you're not gonna, for sure you're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna force people through stuff like that because if you if you know they're the kind of people who are gonna disengage. Right. And um, won't be able to keep their attention. You have to ask yourself, like, how bad is it going to be the rest of this game when they don't understand the rules or they're constantly asking? That's the other thing, too. If you know them well enough, you'd be like, hey, so and so is going to miss half of what we say, but they're not going to complain about it when we correct them during the game. Right. No, I'm, I'm thinking of someone else. Um, like I'm saying you're not a complainer. <laughs> oh no. But he also doesn't miss the rules. I don't think I've ever had a problem with Dwayne being like, I don't understand. Like there may be like one or two things, but I think we're all that happens to everybody. We're like, oh wait, you did explain this. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that or whatever. But I'm talking about like people who'd be like, again, like you're kind of talking about this point now where you're like, and Wondrous Creature was a great example where you're like, you totally screwed it up, right? Because you didn't have the eggs the way they were supposed to be. <laughs> you, you did you it today yeah. with Kabongo. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the insta, the that invertebrates. Was really bad. Yeah, could have been real bad. And but it was like, oh, okay, you know, all right, I screwed up. It's it's okay, it's fine. I'll just do this as long as it doesn't mess anyone else's game up or whatever. Like, okay, I'll just adjust this. It'll be fine. Okay, done. And that approach to it, right? That just recognizing that, like, I screwed up. It's okay. I'm gonna lose. I'm not playing the most effective or efficient game or whatever. That's fine. And just being okay with that is good. I know I'm not that way. I I have a harder time not trying to do well. Like just being like, bro, I'm gonna. This is gonna suck. I'm just gonna be okay with it. <laughs> you like, know, it makes me sad when you when you have to teach a game that you know really well, and then like five minutes in, people's faces are just not in it. Yeah, you know, and you're like. Please, this is such an easy game. <laughs> just, just. Bear I've with never, me. I've never told the. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I ever told the 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 the, the worst date, board game date, story. <gasps> yeah, board well, game it, date. Well, kind of. Do it. Tell. Kind of. It was kind of a board game date. It was a. Yeah, it was weird. So, um, 
met this met this young lady. Um, or and, man. A man. We don't judge here. No, she was a man. She was a man. Wait, what? No, she was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I won't go through any of the other stuff because it's irrelevant, but we got to a point where we're sitting down to play a game and I'm, you know, I kind of always go through like if, if somebody's never played games before, I'll usually bring out um, like seven wonders, duel splendor uh, pandemic and Azul because they're all open information games. Really the only thing that is like private information is like your strategy, right? What you want to do. And they're pretty easy to be like, Hey, look like there's like two or three different ways you can approach this game choose whichever one you want, keep it to yourself. And we can talk through turns very openly without, you know, again, forcing them to make a decision or making it feel like they're not playing their own game. So um, she chose to play Splendor. I was like, all right, cool. All right, put it all out. Yeah, great game. Right? You know, it's got three rules, right? <laughs> Basically, like it's got like you can do th- one of three things, right? You can take chips. You can purchase a card, or you can reserve a card. Yeah, or you That's can it. you can pack it up, put the game away. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and of course, when taking chips, there's like again, like two rules: like you can take three uh, different chips, or you can take two of one kind, as long as there's at least like four in the stack or whatever it is. And I think I made it into like I finished teaching the the rule about which chips you could take. And it was it was difficult apparently because <laughs> it was like all right you could take you know three different colors or two of the same as long as there's this many and you can have ten total and she was like oh my god this is complicated and I'm like uh, honey you don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> just just like okay this is this this I'm imagining this, this is, is at your house. And she goes, this is really complicated. <laughs> and you're just going like. <laughs> uh, it, so I, I, we we're sitting at the table. She was sitting with her back to all the board games. Uh, but yes, there was very much a kind of a look and, and being like, all right, well, this is this is this isn't going to work. It's like a, just like a, a, a split second peek into the future where that wall is empty and you have no more. You have no more games in your life. You know, you have a bunch of cat pictures. You have Uno, Monopoly, cat pictures on the wall, and you're Cards taking your you're taking your fourth trip to Disneyland, <laughs> Orlando, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, that's that's exactly it. That was there's like those moments in dates where you know you're like this isn't this isn't ever gonna work. There's no like because it's one thing like I don't need a I don't need a partner who's gonna be able to play Twilight Imperium with me. Be nice. But that would be absolutely gangster. You know, that's a that's a pretty tall order, and I recognize that. But you know, like, look, if I can't, if we're struggling with <laughs> the chip rule <laughs> in Splendor, we're not going to make it very far. We're not going to. I went Candyland. I don't even own Candyland. Candyland is more entertaining than Splendor is, anyway. So. What wow. is going on? Do you not like Splendor at all? I no. think we're getting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have Marvel Splendor, so. Oh, the one with. Oh, oh so you have think? themed trash. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> I mean, Splendor definitely isn't an amazing game by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a really good entry level game. I'm sorry. I'm just being. I'm just. I'm just been a snob lately. Yeah. I will oh, say yes. I did really like or do like Splendor Duel. Um, it's a different enough game from Splendor, and of course, designed for two players to make it uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that the balance for two players is also probably better. Do yeah. like Splendor Duel also? It's a totally different setup though, because you place all the chips out on this like spiraling board, and mm-hmm. you're able to take sections of them depending on certain rules and whatnot and that's how um you acquire those chips rather than just like pulling them that already the sounds way better than the other one yeah it's a it's a especially at two players it's an objectively better game it's also a little too small. yeah small box it's packaged really well too yeah but i think to answer the question for me it really depends on a couple different things i mean i like teaching and you know being a teacher once in a long time like it is good and it's nice it's fun it's also cool when like your players get it 
right? When they do get it and you're like, oh, cool. Like, I feel like I did a good job, right? Like, yay, I don't suck at fucking something, you know, simple. Um, But it can also be really intimidating, especially if you haven't played the game, right? Where it's like, all right, I have prepared for this. I prepared for the teach, but I haven't actually played it. So you have to rely on certain crutches or whatever, you know, like just today when I was teaching both Kabongo and Undergrove, it's like, okay, well, like I, I need the rule book or I need a guide, something nearby. And kind of that like anxiety of like, oh, I could totally screw this up. And since none of us have played this before, you have to be like a live action fact. Yeah. And we don't decide, we decide we don't like it because I screwed up the teach or I didn't teach it well enough or we messed up some rule or something like that. It can be really annoying. Um, and of course, the time to prep sometimes is not insubstantial depending on the game. So being able to dedicate the time to whatever your system is, which I'm sure everyone here will explain their personal systems here in a minute, but it's a lot. I spent, yeah, if you're doing like a Lacerda, right? Like you're reading a rule book for two hours or you're watching an hour long video, if not longer. Yeah. How many times though? I mean, are you oh, are you able true. to are you able to just watch? Because Dwayne, that's that's your methodology now, aren't you? You're proud, like I don't ever read rule books anymore. No, I do read rule books now. Oh, now, yes. Oh. I I used to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I used to. Like, it started ending like right when i'm right after i met you it started ending but i was very much not reading that shit i always watched the video um i mean it worked but ever since actually reading the rule books it's like oh they're there for a reason (laughs) yeah (laughs) reading in my opinion reading the rule book is leagues ahead of watching a video for you understanding yeah it's just it's like three times more effort than just until you get up and kind of paying attention until you get a fucking booty rule book yes yeah, i've say. read my fair share of booty rule books and it's like man i didn't that's crazy yeah i think that's another one of those things where the industry standard has changed like players are no longer willing to accept a poorly written rule book because if it's a poorly written rule book and players are struggling to understand the rules, they're not going to rate it well. And if it doesn't go over well with the community and again, in a, in a space where it's saturated, right. With, we have a lot of options. If you're not producing something that's good. And word of mouth is very much important. Yeah. And it's not, I don't want to say it's not hard, but it really isn't hard. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, right? Especially in the like, era of crowdsourcing. It's really just like formatting issues. Yeah. Like, just, you know, hey, send it to 20 people who've never played your game before, right? And have them let you know if they think they can understand your game. Or even stuff like when games don't have clarifications, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, if you have... Like I think Wild Child West, some of the, some of the of the asymmetric boards are clarified in the back of the rule book. Yeah, because they assume the other ones are it's easy enough, self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Just put just put the rest of them in there. Yeah. Just write just write out the paragraph of exactly what it's supposed to do, for one more page. It's fine. You have end game scoring cards mm-hmm. that rely on you having certain things. If the back of the rule book, if it's just the card and the back of the rule book has like two of them clarified out of 10 and you're like, okay, well, I can read and this is not making sense. So what's going on, right? Like, Yeah. That or be willing to number all of your cards and be active in BGG forums. Again, forums, wonders, creatures. Every card had a number and every card was explained in the rule book. Yeah. Like above and beyond, really well done, exceptional. Isle of Cats, mm-hmm. whatever that company is, it's up there. It's over there. 
whatever whatever that company is, right? Isle of Cats, they have a living clarification slash fact sheet on their website for every single card in the game. And it's like sectioned to like cards that have to de- that deal with this. Mm-hmm. It's these numbers through these numbers. This is what they mean. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, that's, um, yeah, the um, Scythe, everything is numbered as well. And that was literally for the sole purpose of being able to go to BGG. And Reference. Because, be like, like, you don't have to be like, the card with that says all of this stuff. It's like, nope, card 27. Yep. Encounter 27. Clarify this for me. Yep. Also something that, well, again, we brought it up today. Wingspan does it, and you would like for Kavango to do it. Yeah. Where is like end game scoring conditions? You have so like in wingspan, if it's like collect birds with uh, location in locations the in the name, and you go to the appendix, and it's it tells you all of like location names. Yeah, these tells are you all, all the names that count yeah. as locations. Yeah. Well, I think even in some of them now they started to bold those words. In the cards, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, yeah, to really help. And and Kavango, the problem was is that one of I think it was the one you got, right, Sebastian? Yes. It was. What did it say? It was in or by water. Yes. Uh, it was cards that show the animal. Yeah, in or by water. Now, here's the thing. You would think that that would be relatively simple. The problem is, the art, while interesting and well done and very thematic for what it is is very subdued. None of the animals are bright or colorful. None of the landscapes are bright or colorful. Uh, it is a very, like, dusty-looking Yeah, game. And one of my and cards... And I don't mean dusty in a bad way. No, not, yeah, not yeah, in the yeah. Gen Z way, yeah. in the actual <laughs> dust bowl, <laughs> dusty, right? Savannah, plains type, yeah. type, right? And there was, there was like... Because, like, like, until you... Literally, until you read your thing... I was not aware that there was water on any of my cards. Yeah. Like I had no clue. But then on the opposite side, they do have ones where like I had to go for toxic ones and toxic is a, is a and it's labeled labeled on the card. And it's like, mm, there you go. Yeah. So they could have just put like a little, a little, a drop in the corner mm-hmm. of the card, just a little tiny symbol, just a drop. You know, that, that guarantee that scores for that card. Right. Yeah. Instead of just like, well, God. That looks like water. <laughs> I didn't even think about this from the perspective of um, uh, people who are, who are color and blind. And they you, just see like never different see shades. Anything. Yeah. You would have no clue. It just look like another hill. Completely... It really, really, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. There's several of them. Like I looked at mine and there's like a tree frog one where it's like he's on a little branch or whatever. And in the background, there is what appears to be like a, blue, a really dark bluish you know, shade of water. And then like grass behind that and but they all know, just kind of fade into and each other exactly and it's like i mean like if i again it wasn't it wasn't literally until you're like oh yeah i'm looking for these and i'm like there's <laughs> cards wa- ask for that <laughs> that matters there's water here so yeah interesting watch interesting me, watch that be completely not what that card was talking about yeah right <laughs> when he's when uh you- he's, the, he's gonna come on and he's gonna comments big you guys are fucking stupid yeah <laughs> When Please you do. read a rule book, do you read the entire thing? No. Okay. The I, short the short answer is no because I'm assuming you're also asking for like solo. Solo? Yeah, I'm not reading. No, 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 read no. that. Like do you read like uh, the FAQ? Do you read the appendix? Do you no. read No. Okay. Not on a No, cuz appendixes are there for you. I think are there they're there for you to refer while you're playing like with those one-off things. Yeah. Um, FAQ like common if there's like a one page thing of like hey commonly missed rules or something like that or like common issues sure I'll I'll read that um, deeper question mm-hmm. notes in between the main teachings of the game mm-hmm. and it's just like note oh like designer notes you may, notes and you stuff? may encounter the this the whatever blah 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 blah, blah, blah right? I will say though sometimes it's just like I can understand if somebody is not like they don't play board games often. You would have to put a note, like they don't blah know blah what, blah they blah don't blah. Know what the lightning symbol means note. Yeah, lightning symbol note. A hand of cards is the one you're holding, and you it's like stuff like that. 
Um, I was thinking more along the lines of like designer notes, like, hey, like we did this because this represents this thing. No, uh, not for right? like thematic stuff. Straight oh. up, just like small, like. I mean, if it's a. You might encounter this specific situation, and if you do, shuffle the cards. I'll hit those. Oh, right yeah, there. I'll read those. That's to me is a part because in part, when you read the book the first time and you're going to teach it and play it, a lot of the reason, I won't say it a lot of, but it's, it's it's nice to be able to have that recall to be like, I don't remember the rule, but I know it exists. And I generally remember where I read it in the rule book. Let me pull like it Like what back section up. it might be on. As opposed to somebody's like, hey, what happens when blank happens? And you're like, I don't know. No. I have no idea. I don't even know if that's a thing the game cares about. Yeah, let me go to the fact you real quick. Yeah. No, I... <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, I'll also read designer notes and all other stuff if there's time. Because sometimes it's actually really helpful to understand, like, the conceptual practice of the game. So, like, Distilled was a good example where their rule book had a lot of stuff about distilling, like, the actual process of it. And they talked about, like, hey, like, we took liberties here and there, but, like, this is what you're doing, and this is what a, the distilling process looks like. Um, so I think... At least, again, for, for me, as I was reading it, helped me conceptualize, again, what I was trying to do in the game and, and made it a lot more appealing. So, just quickly, what I do. I'll read the book. The day, I'll say, like, the day before. Okay. I'll read the book. So it's fresh. Yeah. I'll read the book. So fresh and so clean, clean. I'll watch. I'll still watch a How to Play and then I'll watch a playthrough. Mm. And then the day of, I'll watch the playthrough. The playthrough? I'll watch the playthrough. Again? If I'm reading the rule book, I'll listen to the playthrough and see if I catch anything. But I, for the playthrough, I'm just trying to get, like, hearing what the, like, flow of the game is, you know? Mm. This player goes, this player goes, this player goes, reset, right? Like, Because in the playthrough playing with people like y'all and Enrique and people like that, y'all will tend to ask, how many times can I see this? How many t uh, how many cards of this are, which stuff like that's in the rule book, but like how often is it that this happens? Yada, yeah. yada, yada. More conceptual yeah. questions. And a playthrough will more or less show you that. Sure. Um, so that's why I, I'll watch the playthrough mainly is for those kind of things. Like, what card kind of cards can I see? That makes sense. What might happen in the game? I don't have the patience for it. Also, it's just you got to... Like, I like to watch... Um, uh, watch it played. John Goods Games? John Goods Games no. is probably my favorite. Or, yeah, but it's the, the couple. I cannot Which remember couple? their name. Maple University? No. I, don't I think, know. I think I don't you're know. talking about Watch It Played, the um, she's Asian and he's sub, he's yeah. also Asian, but yes. I think of the Indian variety. Yes, them too. Yeah. Um, I think it's Watch It Played. Oh. No, Before You Play. Yeah. yeah before yeah, yeah. You Play. I think it's Before You Play. They're great. I, I like to watch their playthroughs. I just watched the playthrough for... I forgot her name. Undergrowth. Is his name Naveen? Naveen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We should know her name. She does more, more of the content than... He just has a very unique name. Yeah. That has stuck to me. She always does like the... Yep. She holds it for like five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> They're not watching you. Get out of here. <laughs> but what if? Yeah. If you are. Comment. But yeah, that's my... That's how I... That's how I would go through. Um, and of course, it's the type... It's the type of game too. If it's fucking harmonies, I'll just read the rule book and I've got... Okay. Yeah, good got to go. It. But yeah, I'm thinking more so how am I going to teach a medium, heavy, heavy game? Yeah. That's my process. Sure. Well, that's how you're going to learn the game. You and we haven't, I mean, again, we, I think we have talked in the past about how we like to teach games, but, um, but like learning how to teach you the same other than just doing audio rather than visual. I, I think honestly, I don't have a specific preference. I think that it, it fluctuates depending on like the game, my mood. Because mm -hmm. I've gone through like, I'm going to read this 40 page rule book 
and I read the rule book and I'm happy and excited and I'm ready to learn, ready to teach. And other times where I'm like, I really can't read four pages right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I yeah. think I get more excited about, I think for myself, I know I'm more excited about teaching a game if I would rather read it than watch the video. Sure. I think I'm, I know that I'm scared of the teach if I'm like scouring the internet for a video. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I definitely like to pair them together whenever possible. Um, it it really depends on kind of like the time and the space. Because like sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, hey, got people coming over at 630. And I'm going to have an hour when I get home to do whatever I got to do before they get there. And I haven't read the rule book yet. So while I'm having like lunch at my desk or whatever, I'm trying to find a playthrough video and just have it on the background or whatever. Um, but I think ideally I'd like to read the book and then watch the video um, to kind of confirm. But the problem is sometimes, so like I, it, it wasn't an issue with Undergrove because nothing changed. The problem is, is that some of these uh, teaches that are available are from crowdfunding campaigns. And prototype copies. They're prototype copies, and which it's not a big problem if the components don't look the same. The bigger problem is, is that if the rule, rule set changes, changes, yeah, right. And I've seen a couple of those where it's like they you watch the video, and the video is from the crowdfunding campaign, and it's like ninety five percent the same. But the, you know, you go to play the actual game, and it's like, oh, well, this is different. Like, oh, you get three of these rather than two of these, and like little balancing mechanisms. I'm trying to remember the one most recently where I encountered that, where it was a, uh, it wasn't that long ago, where it was like very subtle, but there were like three or four things that you could you could tell through play testing after the campaign had been completed that they're like, yep, we got to adjust these things, and um, again, not a huge problem, but you know, when there's you know how to play content out there already, people aren't necessarily inclined to remake new content. Um, so yeah, that can be a bit of a challenge if, if you're, if you're dealing with old content, then there are games out there that like some of them are actually just old enough that like there isn't good playthrough content or how to play content. Yeah. Like I remember when I was doing my solo journey, so sad times, <laughs> um, Star Trek frontiers, which is the Star Trek skin of Mage Knight. Ooh, um, by Vladis Vratl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's going to send you a nasty gram. No, he's not. I love Dungeon Pets. It's a great game. <laughs> um, I could not find a good playthrough because the game is like 10 plus years old or whatever, and people weren't making playthroughs for Mage Knight, or, and they definitely weren't making anything for frontiers if they were to it was like camera and it was like all right oh. so i've set up <laughs> <laughs> no seriously and those are i mean like you get used to a certain standard and you're like ah, oh, this is this is hard to watch and uh i got i literally could not find anything for frontiers but i i would i through reading it turns out that like it is basically a one like it, it is a reskin with very few changes so I was literally able. To, I watched a, a how to play of Mage Knight. Of Mage Knight. That's funny. And then try to read the rule book. Again the differences and and like figure out what the differences were and whatnot. It was exhausting. Which, yeah, it's. I mean, those are few and far between. I mean, and you know, with how many new games are coming out, you know, on a regular basis, being able to go back into like the archives is probably going to be like not a real big concern, but it's definitely still something. But. I just love when. Reading a rule book, like you're in the middle of it, you're like, "I'm gonna like this game." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I did it. I did it with Inventions. Mm. I did it with River of Gold, and yeah. like, oh, you know, it's funny you say you say so, those two so games. Good. Those two games. I was gonna say, listening to the teach, it like five minutes into the teach, I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> this is it." Mm. Yeah, it's. I, I feel like the opposite is also true, though. Like oh, if you're yeah. playing, if you're reading and you're like, ah oh, man, this doesn't really do much. I'm gonna be honest. Like, Kabongo was fine. It was an entertaining game. It does what it it comes to do, and it does it well enough. But it's not deep, right? There's not a whole lot of meat on the bone. 
and reading the rule book, I was like, oh, yeah, you just pick a card, and if you can play it, you play it. If not, you put it in your sanctuary. And play it later. Play it later if you can. And, yeah, I was just like, okay, yeah, it's really, it's just, there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, and it, it, it delivered exactly that experience. Animal Collector Simulator. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's fine. It's a, it's a good game. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I don't know if it'll stay in my collection, but. All right, go ahead and read it. And that'll be the end of the video. <laughs> oh, shit. Ooh. One play rating, by One the way. play rating, one time through. Um, well, I feel like I got to talk about it just a little bit more if I'm going to give it a rating. No, that's fine. Of, nope, nope, nope. I got to. So, because some of the things that we did talk about, so one of the problems is that the action cards very limited. Like there's like five or six different actions. Is that there even in five the different ones? Well, there's the one where you have to you put two money into the climate and get a point. Yeah. The one where you get a rewild card. The research one where you get the three cards. The one where you just get two dollars. Um, relocation. 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 Well, yeah, where you could swap them or take something from the discard pile. I think that's it. That might be five. It's Might fine. be five actions, yeah. Um, so very limiting. Um, yeah, other than that, though, I mean, good component quality. Like, I like the little trays and everything. Like, the setup is very easy. Um, it's very intuitive. Um, the art, you know, maybe leaves it a little bit to be desired, but... I think we just expect big bangers from Kickstarter now. At least me, yeah. I, I do. If I'm going to kickstart it, it's because the game took five years to develop and, <laughs> you know... I mean, I definitely have, I've definitely received and have backed games that I know are smaller and lighter because it's like, okay, cool, like there's, there's a place for these things. But I think the problem is, is that in the lighter end of, of games, I don't feel the need to own a whole bunch of them. Um, so I'm very, you know, like, all right, cool. If I'm going to play light games, I'm gonna, like, there's like five or six, like, I'd rather just play Habitats. I'd rather play Bird Watcher than Kabongo as of right now. Like, both of those games, I would rather, and we played both of those many 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 times and i would still rather go to that than kabongo um kabongo for me is probably like a like five point five six yeah <laughs> tell me what you think but daniel will be receiving his <laughs> copy in the mail that he kickstarted also how do you feel about it i liked it Again, that's weird because you're not saying anything else. You're just like, I loved it so much. It's the best ever. It's got animals. no. I mean, it was it was exact. It was exactly what it was. Boom it slay. didn't try to be. Wow, anything. what great phrase! It it, it is what it is. It didn't try to be anything different, or it didn't try to be. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? It didn't try to be more than it needed to be. Yeah, it didn't, and I appreciate that. It just doesn't. What's your rating? 7.5. All right. And I'm giving it a 10. And with that, we're going to call. <laughs> what? <laughs> These numbers don't matter. Hey. Okay. Dwayne. Number don't matter. Bird Watchers, Habitats, Kavango. There's no S at the end of Bird Watcher, by the way. Oh, Bird Watcher, singular. Habitats. Is it Habitat or Habitats? It's Habitats. Habitats? Yeah. Habitats. Hepatitis. Hetty bats. So which one? Which or to rank them? One, two, and three. Habitat. Habitat is on top for sure. Yeah. Habitat, Bird Watch, Kabongo. Honestly, I think I think it's Habitat, Kabongo, Bird Watcher. Wow. Is it because Bird Watcher is just birds? I actually think I do think that Bird Watcher is more game than Kabongo. It yeah. is for sure. And it's in a smaller box, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Um, they definitely could have done a little bit more with the, the types of birds. They're all like bird of paradise type birds or something of paradise or whatever. Yeah. Tropical. Yeah. I don't... I don't know. It's just... It might, it might be... I don't know. It might be honeymoon phase. <laughs> Okay. I, don't know. I mean, if you've, if it's, if you've been excited I've about been excited it and been for fucking for pissed so that you weren't getting it in the mail yet. <laughs> it's I'm biased. It's animal game. It's new animal game. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it might. Maybe it might change after I play it 
10 more times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For better or worse. Yeah. For better or worse. Yeah. But as of right now, yeah, Habitats is is on top. All right. Number two, maybe number two animal game. Wow. Yeah. And that'll do it for us here, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Friday Night Live. Tuning in. (laughs) We'll be back next year. Give it a (laughs) bop.